Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's broadcast on Oncomine Precision Assay on the Ion Torrent Genexa System by Varun Bagai. I'm Ben Halen of Thermo Fisher Scientific, and I'll be mo moderating today's event. Before we begin, I'd like to encourage you to engage with us. You can submit as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Simply type them into the Ask a Question box on the left and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Please welcome Varim. Thank you, Ben, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Varun Bagay. I'm currently working as Senior Technical Project Manager for Thermo Fisher Scientific with the Analytical Validation Consulting Team. Today, we are going to discuss the recently launched Aquamine Precision Assay on the Ion Torrent Genexus system. So before we get into the Oncomine Precision Assay, I wanted to highlight this fact that the next generation sequencing technology has become a very important tool for clinical oncology research. According to the 2017 published Personalized Medicine Report, 73% of the medicines in oncology pipeline today have associated biomarkers. Which, and it's quite evident that now we need a technology that could detect simultaneously different types of biomarkers from a single sample. And NGS as a technology allows us to do that. So as labs across the globe started adopting NGS technology into their clinical workflows, there were a few challenges and barriers ex experienced that are highlighted below, right? So the first one out of that is that NGS is too slow. So it requires days and often weeks to get the results back once the, it is submitted. The second point highlighted is that NGS is too complex. So there's high level of user expertise required to run NGS instruments as it's not a fully automated assay before the launch of the Genexus instrument. And we have modular workflows requiring multiple instruments and touch points for running the NGS assays. For example, if using Ion Torrent Gene Studio system, we have about six instruments and seven touch points with about 75 minutes hands on time which is also equivalent to other technologies like Illumina and Kaijin Gene Reader. So the next one highlighted is that NGS is too costly. So the cost of hiring and training staff it gets added, added on to the NGS stats and also there's cost penalty for running small batches if you have, don't have enough samples currently. The last one mentioned here below is that NGS is too limited as a technology because you have you know tissue requirements, right? It's, if you're running an assay with requiring higher inputs of tissue, then you will start seeing a lot of QNS failures. So a new day for precision oncology was observed with the launch of the Ion Torrent Genexus system, which is the world's first turnkey automated NGS system that allows specimen to report in a single day with only two user touch points. The image on the right shows the two instruments that will be part of this uh, Genexus system there being the Ion Torrent Genexus instrument, the one with the bigger size, and then the smaller instrument shown here is the Genexus purification system that launched last month. So some of the benefits of using the Ion Torrent Genexus system are that it provides single day turnaround time for you to uh, and provide the results for in, from NGS with along with IHC and at the same time. It's an automated sample purification, library prep sequencing and analysis solution which helps increase the reproducibility while reducing your personal costs. It allows the flexibility of economically running few or one samples, reduces the need for batching and help us to deliver results faster than ever before. So this system was manufactured at a facility registered with FDA and ISO 13485. And some of the research applications for this instrument include the oncology and inherited disease with reproductive health and infectious diseases to come in the future. So please note that the, the integrated workflow, including the Genexus purification and the Genexus instrument will be launched with the Genexus software 6.6 update coming in the next couple of months. So the Ion Torrent Genexus integrated sequencer maximizes the flexibility because of the fact that it now utilizes a chip which has multiple lanes. So up to four different assays can be prepared and sequenced simultaneously in a single run using the Ion Torrent Genexus instrument. It also allows you to multiplex up to 32 libraries in a single run if you're running a one pool assay. And if you're running a two pool assay, it will be a 16, up to 16 libraries can be prepped in a single run. 
So there's two weeks on instrument chip and reagent stabilities for uh, your sequencing reagents at the bay. The assay and throughput flexibility is also facilitated by the strip and multi-lane sequencing chip. So you could use one lane at a time if you have fewer samples, but, and if you have more than eight samples or higher, you can run the four full lane chips. Minimize consumable footprint now require, reduces the required storage space. So we had some of our reagent cartridges redesigned, so it takes less space to store them in the minus 20 freezer. Going into details for the Genexis instrument and the, uh, the Genexis purification system. So the system allows you to do the, both the purification and quantification, starting from a wide range of sample types highlighted in the left. So you could start uh, using FFP tissue, frozen tissue, bone marrow, whole blood, PBL, urine, saliva. So all of these sample types can be extracted using the purification system. So for an example shown here, you, it's a two hour turnaround time for doing 12 FFPE samples for isolating both DNA and RNA. And if you were starting from plasma samples, so you will, you can, if you're able to extract six plasma samples for, from a single run. On the right, it shows the library preparation to the variant in interpretation time for the ion tolerant Genexus G GX5 chip, which has 12 to 15 million reads per lane. So a total of four lanes on this chip provides about 48 to 60 million reads. And as an example shown here, if you're running a single lane run for the Alcoman precision assay, it takes about 14 hours from a sam sample to report. And approximately about 24 to 30 hours if you're running a full chip. The Genexa software is also the end-to-end -end integration. So it's a fully integrated solution enabling specimen to report workflow. So you no longer require any additional ion reporter software or server to do the analysis. So all the analysis happens on the Genexis instrument itself, which has the software embedded. So it's easy to use software with a new simplified user experience that helps minimize the learning curve and human error. It is robust. It's still based on the variant calling accuracy that was built with the variant calling plugin and installed in the ion torrent instrument. It is also provides flexibility with the option to choose between integrated analysis on the instrument or analysis on the ion reporter's local software or server or the ion reporter cloud. So it, you, it, it allows you to choose one of the options for doing the analysis. Next, I will be going over the Oncomine Precision Assay that was launched specifically for use on the Ion Torrent Genexis system, and it's a new generation solution for genomic profiling, and it aims to resolve some of the challenges that occur with NGS discussed previously. So this assay, Oncomine Precision Assay run on Genexis system provides a fast solution with a single day sample to report turnaround. It is an easy to use system with a fully automated two touch points and requiring only about 15 to 30 minutes of hands-on time for setting this, the, both the instruments. Provides cost savings as there's no requirement to batch samples across multiple sequencing runs. So you can run a, a smaller batch with a single lane run versus a you know, four lane run with 16 samples. Provides tissue saving as it's built on the, our chemistry, our AmpliSeq chemistry. So it's based on the newer AmpliSeq HD chemistry. So with a minimum sample input requirement and provides maximum results from various tissue types. So some of the highlighted features of the Oncomine precision assay on the Genexis system are highlighted below. So it's a created pan cancer content. So it covers mutations, CNVs, and fusion variant types across 50 key genes. Also includes the tumor suppressor drivers and resistant variants that were created keeping in mind the pan cancer content, which is actionable. So it can be used for both tissue and plasma samples. So there's only a single test, one workflow with multiple sample types. So you can use the same kit and assay for, for solid tumor or for, for, for testing the, the plasma samples. It utilizes the molecular tagging approach, which is actually required for enhanced low level variant detection as a key, key point for liquid biopsy testing. So it utilizes the UMI tags based on AmpliSeq HD chemistry to get to low levels of variant detection. And lastly, we also launched the IonTor and Fusion Sync de detection technology, which provides both sensitive and specific target isoform detection plus novel fusion 
detection from with the exon tiling approach that will be discussed on the later slide. As I mentioned earlier, there's only one kit with multiple applications. So there are three different workflows that can be run using the Oncomine Precision Assay. So you have a DNA or RNA only option testing for FFPE tissue samples. So you could run up to 32 FFPE tissue samples if you're using only DNA or RNA workflow. And it also allows you to do the simultaneously DNA and RNA testing for FFPE tissue samples, where you know up to 16 samples can be tested, including both DNA and RNA inputs. And lastly, the same kit also allows you to do cell-free total nucleic acid testing, which is required for liquid biopsy samples. So up to 32 liquid biopsy samples can be pre prepped using the, this kit for Oncoman precision assay. Getting into the Oncoman precision assay content in a little bit more detail, so this is this content is carefully curated to include all relevant targets of emerging importance in precision oncology clinical research. So it asses, covers about 50 genes with 2,769 unique variants. So out of the 50 genes on this panel, the 45 are covering for hotspot mutations. There are 14 genes for covering copy number variation, and then it also includes 19 fusion driver genes. So the span cancer span has a, also it kind of keeps in mind the focus on the non-small cell lung cancer, solid tumor indication that that's the most biomarker rich uh, cancer type. Plus the Oncoman precision assay also includes 218 potential resistant mutations across 22 genes. Here's the pie chart that goes over the pan-cancer clinical research application for the Oncoman precision assay. As expected, non-small cell lung cancer continues to be the most biomarker-rich indication, with about 25% of the targets on this panel covered for non-small cell lung cancer. Then you also have the colorectal and the breast cancers that are you know, next in line after non-small cell lung cancer, covering about 10% of the targets. But here it just highlights all the variant solid, all the various solid tumor indications that are covered as part of the Oncoman precision assay. So as I mentioned earlier, the Oncoman precision assay covers 45 genes for DNA hotspots. So it, it includes all the important actionable genes like EGFR, BRAF, KRAS, and uh, NRAS along with the, the IDH12 plus other 35 genes. For the CNV targets, we have about 14 genes and includes all the FGFR123, KRAS, MET, and CDKN2A and P10 genes. For the fusions, it all includes the previously known ALK, RET, Rossman fusion targets and also includes the newer fusion driver genes uh, like FGFR123, the NTRAX123 and covers the intragenetic fusions from the BRAF, EGFR, and MET genes, including the MET exon protein skipping assay. So this uh, bar graph uh, shown on this slide kind of go, goes, walks us through the 50 genes uh, covered on this Oncoman precision assay, right? As I mentioned earlier, this was, panel was designed to detect 2769 unique variants that includes the hotspot mutations, CNV genes, and fusion isoforms. So here are some key statistics for this panel. So we have about 269 TP53 mutations, which account for approximately 90% of known recurrent hotspots. There are 151 targeted isoforms covering NTRAC 123, including various partners and breakpoints. Similarly, we have about 156 FGFR 123 fusion isoforms covering various partners and breakpoints and 89 for red driver gene. There are three intragenetic variants for MET exon 14 scape, the EGFR8 and then ARV7. And there are also 218 potential resistant mutations across 22 genes. So there are three different color schemes shown on, on this graph with the blue showing the, num not the number of hotspot mutations for a particular gene. And then the, and similarly we show with the CNV genes and light blue for the fusion isoforms to show as representation of how each variant type is covered with each gene.
So next, I also wanted to cover the oncomine precision assay, you know, genes that are on current labels and guidelines. So as, as we can expect, right, non-small cell lung cancer has, is the most biomarker rich indication, and it has ALK, BRAS, EGFR, RB2, KRAS, MET, NTRAC123, and RET and ROS1 targets, which are part of the labels and guidelines for non-small cell lung cancer. Then we have some other cancer types uh, for covering targets like NTRAC123 for pancreatic, the soft tissue. And then also for colorectal cancer, there are BRAS, KRAS, NRAS, NTRAC123 targets covered. So it's a very actionable uh, content packed assay designed on the ion torrent genexus system. Next, I would go over the newer fusion sync technology that was launched as part of the Oncomine Precision Assay. So before we get into fusion sync, there are two key features for optimal fusion detection, right? There's one, performance of fusion detection with low input samples and low level of transcripts. Then you also would like the, the fusion technology to be able to detect novel fusions for driver genes like, that are newer, right? Like example, NTRAC and FGFR. I would like to highlight that there are many similar technologies that emphasize about covering novel detection, but they ignore the number one, which is the key performance of detection with low input samples. With our AmpliSeq HD technology, you know, we cover and fusion sync detection, we address both the performance of fusion detection with low input samples and, and low level expression, plus also the now has the ability to detect novel fusions for key driver genes. So fusion sync detection technology is a synchronous approach that combines three methods for sensitive, specific, and broad detection of known and novel fusions. So for the known fusions approach is the method where you know both the driver and partner genes, and you are also aware of the breakpoint that is involved in this fusion event. So these are you know, covered by having primers that span across both the driver and partner gene, including the breakpoint, as part of our isoform approach. On the right side is the novel fusion detection covering both the non-targeted and the exon tiling imbalance approach that was launched with this Oncoman precision assay. For non-targeted fusion detection, we know the driver and the partner gene, but the breakpoint is unknown, but it is still covered by the panels which are included as part of the assay. So you have amplicons covering those driver and partner genes and, and the unknown breakpoint. On the right is the exon tiling imbalance approach where you only know the driver gene, but we are not aware of about the partner or the breakpoint. So this exon tiling imbalance is the approach that is used for doing novel fusion detection for key genes like ALK, RET, NTRAC123, and FGFR123. Next, I would like to go into the benefits of molecular tagging approach, which is also part of this Oncomine Precision Assay based on AmpliSeq HD chemistry. So this is very useful for detection of low level variants uh, that are relevant for doing a detection for plasma samples. So this molecular tagging approach allows for tracking and identification of amplification from the original molecular level versus errors that can be introduced due to PCR and sequencing. So then these errors can be analytically removed using the molecular tagging approach. So this process of error removal allows for detection of variants that can exist at very low levels and low level detection is necessary for any liquid biopsy application, right? As variants can be detected below 1% allelic frequency. This is also beneficial for situations where a tissue sample has very low tumor content and you expect the variants to be present at below 1% allelic frequency. Next section in covering in the few slides, I would go over the performance of Oncomine Precision Assay on the ion torrent genexus system. So this slide talks about the performance on FFPE controls that were tested as part of the internal verification using the Oncomine Precision Assay and the Genexus Integrator Sequencer, both which were internally developed and commercially available controls. So the first control here is the internal FFPE control, which is a synthetic control across 24 genes and has the allelic frequency around the 5% range with plus minus 2% standard deviation. And it has 67 SNVs covered plus four indels as part of this control. So there were 32 replicates that were tested during internal verification. And our sensitivity for this uh, control was 99.6% with a PPV of 99.6% for SNVs 
and 100% for both sensitivity and PPV for indels. We also tested some of the commercially available controls from Horizon and CiraSeq, including both the, their, uh, the fusions and CNVs and SNVs, and we had higher than 95% sensitivity and PPV as highlighted. So for the CRSAIC CNV controls, they were tested at with the plus three copies, with the five copies range, and there were 32 replicates done for these two samples, and we got 100% we got sensitivity and PPV results. I would like to mention as a note that this testing was performed at multiple internal R&D laboratories as part of the product verification testing, and samples were pooled and run using different multiplexing strategy on the Genexus instrument. Next, we will go over the Oncommand Precision Assay performance utilizing the liquid biopsy controls. So these were again tested during internal verification uh, performed using the liquid biopsy controls that are, were internally built and commercially available. So the first control again was a synthetic control across 24 genes with a range of lilic frequency for variance from 0.33% with 0.17% standard deviation and it has the same 67 SNV covered as part of the panel and four indels. So we were about close to 90% sensitivity for SNV detection using this control plus 100% PPV. And for indels, we were at 100% sensitivity using 32 replicates. We also tested the internal liquid biopsy control that was uh, built at 1.16 fold change. So this is a synthetic control that contains EDFR amplification and we did 32 replicates uh, with the sensitivity of 100% and PPV of 100. And then for the for our liquid biopsy control covering the fusion variants, right? We build a control that contains MET exon 14 skipping and a and a tri fusion covering three different fusions in total RNA at 1%. And 32 replicates for this were run again internally, and we our sensitivity was 97.7% and PPV of 96.4. So here's, this slide kind of goes over the showing that the performance of the uncharacterized FFP samples that were successfully tested using the Oncomind precision assay. So these samples were included in our internal verification testing, and the results actually demonstrated successful sequencing of these different tumor and biopsy types, right? So the first example shown here in the image is running of Genexus GX5 chips with four full lanes. So we got about 49 million total reads with a, with a, an accuracy mean a raw accuracy of 99.04%, and this run had different cancer types, including bladder cancer, breast cancer, with two different samples, and also included kidney, ovarian, stomach cancer plus uterus cancer samples. At the bottom is, sh uh, is showing the the sample types of CNB and FNAs, right, for the lung and breast. So this was a two lane run uh, run that was successfully you know used sequencing this different tumors using the FNA sample input types. So some of the key genes and variant types that were detected with cell lines and FFP samples as part of this internal verification testing are highlighted below. So we, as shown, right, we have, we covered some of the insertion and deletions for the EGFR gene that are very relevant and important, right? And it also includes the KRAS, G12, the SNV was also, tested as part of an FFPE sample. Then we also did, you know, see detect the ERB2 amplification, CNV, call in one of the FFPE samples and covering the ROS1 fusion uh, driver gene plus a P10 CNV loss that were observed as part of the sample study. So next, I wanted to highlight the correlation and sensitivity of mutation calls that were observed with the Horizon FFP control with catalog number HD789. So 32 replicates of this Horizon structural multiplex control were run during our internal verification testing using Oncomand Precision Assay and Genexus Integrated Sequencer. So this analysis includes 15 mutations with 13 substitutions, one deletion, and one insertion across 10 genes that are detectable by the Oncomand precision assay. And these were actually verified and present in the parental cell line with the, and the mutation allele frequency ranged from 3.5% to 17%. On the right is the, uh, kind of showing you all these uh, 15 mutations 
covered across 32 replicates. So we observed an average R square value of 92% with a detection rate of 480 out of 480 variant calls across 32 replicates were successfully observed with a sensitivity of 100%. So next, I will move into performance of the fusion controls and the FFP samples. So there was, so we had about there were 24 FFP samples that were tested with the Encore Precision assay using the Genexus Integrated Sequencer, and these samples were previously tested using Fish ISC and determined to be either ALK or ROS1 fusion positive. So our verification results showed 100% concordance when using the Encore Precision assay compared to the other methods. So the table here highlights the 17 ALK samples, which were called using Encore and Precision assay on the Genexus instrument. They were also verified using the exon tiling imbalance approach for novel fusion detection. And it actually they showed that the, you could detect all these 17 ALK positive samples using exon tiling imbalance approach, where the imbalance score and the p-value were significant enough to be called as a present based on just the utilizing the exon tiling Tech, uh, approach as part of the fusion sync technology. And then at the bottom are the seven, seven ROS1 samples, which had, which were kind of called positive using our isoform approach, but they, you know, and then the exon tiling approach is not applicable for ROS1 as it is not an intended target using exon tiling imbalance capability. Here are some of the examples for the exon tiling approach uh, using some of the ALK samples. So this is our detection using novel right, exon tiling approach. And, and there's a bar graph shown at the bottom for each sample that shows you the intended breakpoint and where you start seeing expression differences between three prime and five prime of the, the ALK gene. So the way this exon tiling uh, um, um, imbalance works is that you, you have exon, amplicons covering the whole exon of the ALK gene. And so wherever the ALK gene has a fusion event happening and there's a, you know, we start seeing higher expression for those amplicons after the breakpoint. So this is based on an algorithm where, you know, the imbalance and the p-values are calculated for each uh, key driver gene and then reported as present and absent based on the threshold set. This approach also utilizes the baseline for more robust calling of this exon tiling approach imbalance. So these three ALK uh, positive samples shown here have isoform read counts, right? So they're covering HIP1-ALK for the first sample with H21 exon and ALK20. They had an isoform coverage with C73 reads calling that fusion. And then the molecular counts for this uh, sample were three molecular counts since this assay is based on the amplistic HD chemistry that utilizes the molecular tagging approach. And then at the bottom, it shows that the scores for imbalance and the p-value were significant enough to be called as an ALK positive sample based on exon tiling. The next two are similar examples shown for KIP5B ALK and ML4 ALK example from these 17 previously tested samples. So this next again highlights some of the exon tiling imbalance uh, positive samples for other key genes like FCFR3, NTRAC, and RET. So we have we ran uh, you know the control that was internally built using the ALK, RET, and ROS1 cell lines, and we we are able to have detect ALK ALK imbalance positive through through exon tiling approach. And then the next is the FCFR3, which is uh, you know tested on the RT4 cell line again shows that we were able to detect the FCFR3 and track one fusion positive cell lines using this exon tiling approach. And both ALK and RET are part of the tri-fusion internal control and, they, and it also includes a ROS1 fusion, but I would like to highlight again that the ROS1 driver gene is not part of the exon tiling imbalance novel detection and ALK and RET are, so they both were positively called using this approach. So along with using the cell line controls and internal uh, developed controls, we've also tested the NTRAC fusion control from the Seracare FFP. So this Seracare NTRAC fusion control contains 15 unique NTRAC isoforms 
for five for NTRAC 1, five for NTRAC 2, and five for 3, NTRAC 3 that are covered by the oncomine precision assay. A 5% dilution within normal background of this control was made to reduce the transcript levels of the various fusion isoforms. This dilution was tested with multiple replicates using this oncomine precision assay and the Genexus integrator sequencer. The verification results showed ability of the assay to detect all 15 NTRAC fusion using the targeted isoform designs and measuring the read counts for each isoform. The replicate testing demonstrated high sensitivity and specificity at 5% dilutions above 33 fusion reads. So on the right, on the left is the 15 and NTRAC isoforms that are part of this control, and on the right it shows them there were 30 runs done at 5% dilution with a sensitivity of 99.1% and PPV of 100. So great uh, data from uh, the, utilizing the commercially available NTRAC fusion control. With that, our, uh, that summarizes our topic of discussion today, covering the Oncomine precision assay on the iron taurine Genexus system. Thank you for your time, and we are now ready to take any questions that you may have. Well, hey, thank you, Varun, for that very informative presentation. Um, we've received some great questions already in the chat box, so I'll just go ahead and start with the first one I see here. The question is, my lab gets multiple FNA samples. Will Genexus be able to obtain results given the sample type and the minimal nucleic acid we get from it? Uh, thanks, Ben. Great question. Yes. So with our oncomine precision assay utilizing the AmpliSeq SD chemistry, we only require about 20 nanograms of input for both DNA and RNA. So and what we have found using our internal testing plus the doing analytical validation for our customers that we have, you know, we, we are able to run this FNA type sample types successfully with minimal input amounts. Okay, well, thanks, Varun. Um, here's the second question that came in. It says, is Genexus just released to run the Oncomine precision assay? No, in fact, the Genexus instrument can be utilized to run uh, multiple different assays that utilizes our AmpliSeq or AmpliSeq HD chemistry. So we have already, using our analytical validation service, we have already validated different assays covering uh, oncology and both inherited six space. Okay, well, another question that came in said, can you tell me more about the AV services and how they can be used to validate other assays that can use the AmpliSeq chemistry? Yes, so our analytical validation consulting services provides fast and cost-effective validation of NGS-based oncology assay and panels to clinical testing labs that are following industry quality standards and regulatory guidelines. Also, we have another presentation right now after this called analytical validation of a next generation sequencing laboratory developed test that we would recommend you attend as I think you will find the content in that session informative as well. Okay, great. Well, I'm, I'm just looking at time, and as a reminder to our audience, you know, I think we're out of time for questions, but if we didn't get your question today, anything that was submitted during the on-demand period, that'll be addressed via the email address you provided at the time of the registration. So I guess I just want to close by saying thank you again to our speaker, Varun Bagai, and to everyone who participated in this presentation. Um, we hope you enjoy the rest of the event, and be sure to check back frequently for new content and presentations added throughout the year.